Raids are all about a fire team of six journeying out into the unknown and accomplishing the impossible. Those six are forever enshrined into the history of the game. It's Asperger's Con. It's supposed to be something that's difficult. It's supposed to be something that makes you sweat and think a little bit more than everything else in the game. I feel that everyone can do if they put forth the effort. The theme of Root of Nightmares is all about balance. And internally, the codename was Raid Harmony, specifically for that reason. So it's all about using both light and dark. And we wanted to really make that shine through the encounter mechanics. In order to progress forward, you don't need just light or just dark. You need to work them and mesh them together in order to get through everything. When you've arrived, good. The environment of the raid is really exciting. It's like something we've never seen before. It's a pyramid environment with a lot of beauty in it. This raid is all about terraforming. With this one, we wanted to do something a little bit different and have you revisit the same space, but evolve it over time with that terraforming theme. What you're trying to do is journey through this ever-shifting realm of uh, the Witness's Pyramid after it's been yeah. terraformed by the Blast of the Traveler. Our whole process starts off with a huge brainstorming session. Everyone that's a part of Raids and Dungeons gets to join it. As that develops, we, learn, we get core ideas of what we wanted to pull out. And then from there, designers come in and pick up the idea. So like, Skizzion was a big one. For that encounter, we developed jump pads that you can shoot and launch as your character across the arena. And we're like, oh, that's really fun. After some testing where people died a bunch. Only a few times. Only a once dozen or, or so. Or <laughs> it's fine. The final shape awaits. Your fear brings you pain. We know pain. When we were building the raid, knowing that it was going to be the Witness's Pyramid, we were like, what's the room that we could use that would really clearly indicate to players that this is the Witness's Pyramid? During the third encounter in Fruit of Nightmares, if you actually look up, there's Io and Titan in there, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is where the planets are. Just seeing the planets move around and feel like you're in that space from mm -hmm. the cinematic is super exciting. Having a space that you have to try and kind of live up to on some <laughs> level is, it's a unique and yeah. interesting experience. We want to pay off big story threads. Mm -hmm. Like that's the one of the things that is really critical for us on Raids and Dungeons is having a, a boss that you're excited about wanting to kill them because you know who they are, you know what they've been doing. Nezarek, he whispers to people in your brain, it's not a thing that you like other people to be in. On Neomuna, there's the CloudNet. All the citizens who are in there, they're sort of getting their brains infected by his whispers. Free me. You can't really interact with him when he's in this non-physical body. And so you need to go through and bring that body back into existence so that way you can finally stop him from terrorizing those citizens. Nezarak is sort of like, you know, this, this father of nightmares. He's got these horns that are reminiscent of the exotic helmet. He's got spikes all over his body. It's got like these animal patterns on it. I want to experience this world with my new perspective. He's broken up into a bunch of pieces and he's dead, but he gets revived using the Traveler's light. So he becomes half nightmare pyramid sort of creature, half light. When you see something in front of you in the game and then it looks angry mm -hmm. and it has a beast, kind of like animal sense to it and it moves, you want to get out of the way. The Raid Exotic is um, a shotgun. It's this double barrel shotgun that's like flaming on one side and there's ice coming out on the other. And I was like, whoa. Whoa, and I had people and friends and tests that like aren't even involved in raids. I'm like, yo, you gotta check this out. It feels so unreal in the best way, blending both light and darkness. It will fire first its stasis shot, and then it will fire its solar shot. Very opposite ends of the spectrum, both dark and cold. Right, yeah. Being light and hot. Something about wielding that just in a quick one-two kind of sets my brain alight and also plays very nicely with the themes of the raid. I cannot wait to use it. You get it, it drops. I just have to get it first. <laughs> If you're willing to talk with your friends and put in a little bit of work and, you can do it. and die once or twice or in twelve. some some cases 12 times, <laughs> the goal is to drive a lot of that communicative friendship with people and have that shared bonding experience in a way that tests you in ways that you don't always get in other content in Destiny. We really want to test the bounds of what you're capable of. I think 
just hearing the word raid scares a lot of it our does. players. And I always tell people, I'm like, we're doing something that's fun, that's a little bit more difficult than you're used to, but still a ton of fun.